Hello, I'm Mario Tananguzzi, co-editor-in-chief with Retail Insider, taking care of retail business today with Bruce Winder, who is a retail analyst. Thanks for joining us today, Bruce. Thanks for having me on the program, Mario. Well, some interesting news uh, develops developments in Ontario starting tomorrow, where the sale of alcohol is in convenience stores. Tell me what your thoughts about uh uh, this new, I guess, uh, era uh, in the sale of liquor in Ontario. Yeah, it's a pretty big shakeup. I mean, when you look at the industry, it's been established uh, through controlled retailers for a number of years, you know, decades, if not 100 years. You've got the beer store on one side, which is owned by large brewers. And then you've got the LCBO, which is owned by the government of Ontario. And uh, what's happening that's quite interesting is as of uh, tomorrow, uh, as of Thursday, I guess the uh, 5th of uh, September, um, convenience stores uh, can sell uh, select beer, wine, and uh, ready-to-drink alcohol uh, servings in their stores at the price that they, uh, at they, at, that they set. And, uh, of course, you have to apply for a license, but there's been over 4,000 licenses granted. So um, it's a pretty big deal. Um, and later uh, in October, I believe it's uh, Halloween, grocers will have the opportunity to sell alcohol under sort of a new deal. Mm. Uh, you know, some grocers have already been selling alcohol in Ontario for a while now, but this is a bit of a, a new deal that's coming out for them. Uh, yeah. So we're going to see significant disruption in the uh, alcohol market in Ontario. What impact do you think it's going to have uh, for the consumer, first of all? Yeah, well, I think um, it's going to be quite interesting. And we'll have to see sort of what the, you know, as this rolls out, sort of what the total net effect is. But it's certainly going to offer the, con the this consumer more convenience um, so that, you know, they don't have to drive to a beer store or an LCBO if they don't want. They can go to their local gas station or convenience store. So definitely convenience is a big plus, albeit it's going to be a, a limited assortment. You know, so I would imagine the convenience stores are going to carry, you know, the 80-20 the rule of SKUs at the most. You know, a little bit of beer, a little bit of most popular brands of beer, wine, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, the, the question is, I think, Mario, is what price they're going to charge. Um, because, you know, um, the government has allowed convenience stores to set their own price. And convenience stores are convenience stores. They're there to offer a convenience. And by definition, they usually charge a premium. So... Um, we just need to see what that premium will be. Will it be 10, 20, 30%? I'm not sure. How will that sit with customers? I'm not sure. Um, the other part of this that uh, well, we haven't talked, I think, enough about is uh, there's a bit of a barrier on the grocery side, though. Um, so mm -hmm. grocers are uh, you know, on deck to potentially start, like I said, in the end of October, but not many grocers have signed up for the new program. And um, my hypothesis is that there's a couple of issues there. One is um, the margins in um, alcohol are less than 5%, mm. which is not much. Even for grocery, that's not much, right? And, and the other thing, and this is the big one, I think, is that come January 1st, if you're a grocer over 4,000 square feet, you have to become a de facto return center for bottles and cans. Mm. Um, and this is, you know, I think, a big issue because grocers aren't built for that. Mm. Um, grocers, you know, are, are, you'd have to add, uh, labor, you'd have to add capital, you'd have to, uh, maybe add, um, also put in, um, some issues or some issues as it relates to contamination of food. So you've got all this fresh food in the back and now you've got all these used empties that doesn't sit well, right. In terms of mm. uh, hygiene. So, so I think the industry is sort of going to be, uh, at a wait and see approach on the grocer side. Uh, convenience stores, that seems to be, hey, go forward, 4,000 stores have signed up. But I think on the grocery side, the government might be surprised or disappointed at the uptake. So tell me, uh, um, uh, Bruce, um, you know, what's been the response, uh, first of all, from consumers on this? I think it's been mixed, Mario. I think, you know, some consumers say, thank God, this is great. You know, why did it take you so long? If you look at other provinces like Quebec, they've been doing this for, for a long time now. Yeah. Um, and then there's other consumers who are like, you know what? Um, you know, do I really want this? Do I want it in my neighborhood? Do I want to see people outside drinking? Do I want to, you know, is it going to make people drink more? Is yeah. it going to harm? Is it going to be an issue with addiction? 
So there's all kinds of questions on the social side, um, but most people sort of from an economic side see the benefit. You know, is, has there been a lot of uh, pushback uh, from, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, anti-drinking anti kind of uh, lobbyists and, and, and that element of, uh, you know, those types of organizations? I'm not sure. I mean, I haven't been following it as much, but I'm, I'm assuming there is. I think there's been some activity on that just because yeah. it's such a, a major change. I mean, that's sort of why originally people thought that the LCBO and the beer store, um, you know, had a place because of regulating who, who gets to can buy it. You can't regulate who consumes it, but you can regulate who buys it. But I think the issue here, too, is that you know, we're still the government's still going to regulate who buys it. Um, yeah. There's going to be a step in the process. If you're a convenience store, a grocer, you know, you have to still check ID and make sure that uh, yeah. the person's buying it is at the right age. So I don't think that's going to change, but the perception of that may change. You know, the, the, the fact that it's different. Anytime you have something different in a market this big and a, such a politically charged or socially charged market, you're going to see some blowback from, uh, from special interest groups for sure. Are you going to check it out tomorrow? Yeah, I'd like to. I'd like to go check it out. I'm probably not going to drink, but <laughs> I'm not a big drinker. I might have a Coors Light, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely, uh, I'm going to go check it out and uh, and and also check out social media to see yeah. what the response is, uh, just to see how Canadians feel. And there's going to be a whole bunch of different feelings on the issue. Yeah, but yeah, definitely, this is. I mean, as a retail as a retail uh, uh, student like myself, I <laughs> I just love seeing differences in retail, and it's quite fascinating. Yeah. Um, and, uh, even on the way to work yesterday, I was driving down the 401 and I looked up and I saw an outdoor board, electronic board advertising yeah. at the airport. And it was from circle K saying, we have Coors Light now coming uh -huh. this Thursday. So I thought that was interesting just in terms of, uh, how this is going to work out. And, um, yeah, we'll have to see how it works out. There's going to be some unintended consequences. There's going to be some pluses and minuses. Yeah. We'll just have to see how the whole thing shakes out at the end of the day. All right. Wonderful. Thanks uh, for joining us today, Bruce. Anytime, Mario. Take care. All right. That was Bruce uh, Winder, who is a retail analyst. I'm Mario Taniguzzi, co-editor-in-chief of Retail Insider. Thanks for joining us today.